I'm a, I'm a visual artist from Rotterdam and um, I became a mother 19 months ago, so it's relatively fresh. And, um, <laughs> yeah, <hooray. laughs> and um, also the kind of changes that it brought on me and my thinking are also relatively fresh. So I'll, I'll be speaking from like kind of a transformation process that has been going on and um, yeah, share some of the uh, th themes that are important in my work, but uh, that I've also now come to recognize that are very important in the way I want to be a mom. Um, yeah, so my uh, talk for today is called To Move or Being Moved. The families came one by one into the studio, took off their shoes and entered the play area, which was filled with basic toys, a couple small climbing structures, a ramp, between the insides and outside areas, small platforms, bowls, baskets, stacking rings, bags and blocks. The parents and Janet, the teacher, sat at the edges of the classroom and simply observed. For the first 20 minutes of the class, the parents only watched their children. Aside from greeting each other, they didn't talk among themselves. They gave their full attention to their children, but allowed them to explore it unhindered. The toys are simple and quiet. The furniture for the children is child-sized and safe, and the furniture for the adults is low to the ground and comfortable. The type of atmosphere allows the children to explore and learn without excessive stimulation, and this is reflected by their ex extraordinary focus and concentration. There are no expectations. Children aren't asked to perform, they aren't entertained, and they aren't required to re entertain anyone. It's an environment where the children could just be. So this is a mother's reflection on the kind of space where parents and children meet. Uh, in Dutch it's called spielruimte, like play area. And it's where I went with my son. And it's based on the... Uh, um, like theory or the way you want to be with your child that is actually really old and I come to talk about it later in more detail uh, for now yeah I want to um, um, yeah that so I work my work takes a really long time to make usually I work for a year or longer on a project I do extensive research and um, um, Maybe due to that type of duration that I spend on the project and the kind of um, yeah, uh, short moments of time as, but that I had in the studio and expressing milk and so on, like your day is completely, totally interrupted. You have one or two hours of uh, time where you, where you should concentrate or I felt that I needed to concentrate, but anyway, and I was also extremely overtired. So due to all these factors, it was really difficult for me to find uh, the, uh, the concentration to actually produce work. So I have, haven't produced. I have thought a lot, but haven't actually come to the, to the point of uh, uh, making new work. But yeah, so I, this is a piece of uh, 2007 that's called uh, Mappings Made Themselves um, uh, Dance Along with Dancers Dancing. And um, uh, it's a work uh, that I made in an exhibition space. So I, I kind of made a map uh, of a, that was based on a shop layout. And I collapsed it, the three-dimensional objects into a flat plane surface of powder. And then people walked amongst it and, and uh, they either chose to walk around it or through it. And uh, in this, this work was kind of a beginning of uh, uh, research that, and uh, like, um, yeah, all my works deal with the topic of movement, autonomy and agency. And um, the people that encounter the work are usually a big part in uh, uh, creating that together with the work. And uh, when... Uh, when I became a, a mother, uh, this, of course, uh, um, uh, is also a big theme within the way, I, uh, the way you want to be with your child. 
or the way anyone, any parent is with their child, the, to uh, give their child autonomy and growing autonomy is, I, I, I think, uh, what uh, we work towards. And um, I realized that I, th um, uh, that now, uh, I uh, didn't see, when my son was born, I didn't see him from the moment he was born as a competent person. But I saw him as an infant that needed my help in many more aspects of his life than he actually dis did. And this resulted in that I felt I needed to teach him or to help him. I, for example, would place toys in his hands or would lay him on his belly when he wasn't yet uh, able to uh, roll over by himself. And I was actually the one who was moving him. He was being moved by me. And um, you might wonder what's the harm in that doing that and uh, I now come to see that I think that uh, by taking a different approach I can actually help to foster agency, autonomy and self-initiated movement um, uh, within my son. And um, this is based on a principle that's called RAI which stands for, it's a bit awkward, uh, Resources for Infant Educators. And then uh, it's, it's um, yeah, I, I'll explain it later a bit more. Um, so another work um, that I made a couple of years later that's really complex and I won't uh, say everything about it, but it's uh, showcasing today's essentials. It's um, a film and sculptural installation and a performance that took place in the installation. Um, and again, like I, I created this uh, space where as you entered, the viewer would see the installation as a kind of flat visual space almost. But, when to, but to exit this, uh, the exhibition space, you had to step into the, the sculpture and uh, it had moving parts. And, it, and so you also became uh, kind of a performer by only stepping on what was only a centimeter high mm. platform. And uh, people could change and move things around. Very few people did, I think. But the, the, there was a performer uh, who came and she had a kind of task-like rearrangement of the objects. And this is a still from the film. And in the film, a miniature display was created. The scenes were shot up close, enlarging the textures of the materials and the movements of the han hands. I asked a friend who used to work as a window dresser to make the arrangement. And she didn't rehearse it, and we shot it in one take. And I wanted her hands to have a kind of a searching movement. And um, uh, I, I simply had assembled and selected the materials, but she made the, the arrangement. And in both of these works and many others that I've made, um, I am always in charge of creating the stage. There is a space to play and exert agency the, by the participants, but it remains within the framework that I have set. And now that I became a parent, uh, I, uh, I am very much responsible for the uh, autonomy of my son. And um, um, he is the one who could not have been any closer to me. And now uh, there is a, like, uh, I need to disentangle myself from him. And this is a slow process. And all, this might sound very obvious, but I've noticed that in my daily practice with him, I have still a lot to learn in regard to letting my child experience things in his own way and in his own time. And this is where I think Rai is very helpful. And it starts from the concept that already from birth, a baby is capable to communicate and to learn and that an infant is just as competent as it needs to be at any age. When someone would have told me this, when my son was still very little, I would have said, yeah, 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 I agree. But practically, I didn't really do everything that involved to uh, give him the space to exert his autonomy. I would, for instance, wipe his snotty nose without saying I was going to wipe it. I would place a ring in his hand or show how toy objects can be manipulated. Within the RAI, the caregiver is invited to create the conditions under which the potential and autonomy of a child can grow. 
What adults do with infants and toddlers either supports or undermines their inner drive to learn and to develop their unique capacities as human beings. There are two main areas through which the adult can help the infant. That is through caregiving routines and through offering freedom of movement and free play. So I'll talk a bit about the care because it's really uh, touching, I think, the way uh, caregiving is done. And these pictures are taken in uh, an orphanage called Lotsi in Hungary in the 60s by a really attentive uh, photographer called Marian Reisman. And um, yeah, uh, so it started there in Hungary um, with this orphanage that uh, was set up just after the World War, uh, Second World War. And Magda Gerber, uh, who, in, who uh, coined the term Rai, uh, moved from Hungary to America in the early 50s. And the, the, the term educare, uh, she made up to express that the education of infants is in the care that they receive. Her idea was that everything we do, how we hold our baby, pick her up, put her down, respond to her cries, talk to her, to others in her presence, plan her days, feed her, creates the child's understanding of her own value, the world, and her place in it. Being, being an educator means one who would educate children in a caring manner. The way you care for your baby is how she expresses your love. Oh no, sorry. The way you care for a baby is how she experiences your love. In other words, your care is her education. And I think this image is really lovely, the way you see the children are involved in uh, taking off and on uh, their own clothing and that the caregiver is actually having a really, um, uh, her position is really, uh, she holds back and she waits and she takes time for the child to um, uh, do it by themselves. A basic uh, right principle of sensitive caregiving is to treat the infant as an active participant rather than a passive recipient of care. This is done by communicating to the child what is going to happen so that the child can anticipate and participate in his care. The caregiver waits until she gets a response from the baby before continuing. It's been noted that even the youngest infants respond by relaxing their muscles so that the caregiver can wipe between creases. Rai sees the caregiving moment as fundamental in establishing a secure basic feeling of attachment for the baby and the active participation of the infant as helping to build self-confidence and fostering autonomy. And the other, uh, what is actually very important for me in my own practice is uh, the uh, aspect of movement and play. A Rai baby is never placed into a position which he cannot get into or out of by himself. This is done for a number of reasons. And here I'll quote Amy Pickler. While learning during motor development to turn on the belly, to roll, creep, sit, stand and walk, he is not only learning those movements, but also how to learn. He learns to do something in his own, to be interested, to try out, to experiment. He learns to overcome difficulties. He comes to know the joy and satisfaction which is derived from the success, the result, and of his patience and persistence. So this is a growth chart that's, uh, uh, or movement, gross motor development movement chart that's, that uh, was kind of uh, drawn out of years of observing many, many infants and how they move when no one is interfering. So you start from the beginning where you place a baby on their back and then from there on they initiate all movement and no adult has ever um, positioned the child in any uh, po uh, position whatsoever. So um, the first object of play is the child's own hand. In free and spontaneous activity, the child takes initiative of his own movements, making use of his personal capacities and thus becoming less dependent on the people around him. A child who is allowed to explore his surroundings from his own initiative experiences no distinction between moving, playing and learning. These three aspects merge in all his self-initiated activities. 
So what they do, they, they put objects close to the infant, but never in their own hands. And they, they are like a catalyst, 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 how do you say, to, for the child to move. Um, the play objects are placed in such a way so that the infant must make an effort to reach and grasp. The child works towards what she wants. A baby is playing when she is manipulating an object. So in fact, any object a baby would choose to manipulate, manipulate would be a play object. Um, so the commonality between all right play objects is that none do anything. These passive objects make for active infants. I want to read a quote by Magda Gerber that makes clear what a right treatment can mean to a growing individual. By closely supervising our infants, by allowing them to do what they are capable of, by restraining ourselves from rescuing them too often, by waiting and waiting and waiting, by giving minimal help when they really need it, we allow our infants to learn and grow at their own time and in their own way. I believe that no matter how much and how fast the world changes, a well-grounded, competent and confident person is best equipped to adapt to it. And this is our goal. So what has moved me very much when I became relatively recently acquainted with the ideas of Emmy Pickler is uh, that I recognize that her respectful approach uh, to infants um, through care, the freedom of movement and self-initiative that play helps to instill the initiative, self-confident agency and aut autonomy within the child. And practicing these ideas on a daily basis that I've now started with my son has already changed how I relate to him and interact with him, but also with other adults. And this has, I have already noticed how it starts to seep in uh, into how I want to work. Um, So, I, as I mentioned before, that one of my that uh, I actually have a complaint uh, with in my own work that is that I always am the one to set the framework within which others can uh, kind of uh, um, be free and uh, have their autonomy and agency. And what I thinking and where it's leading um, is that uh, I that I can. Um, that my work will actually have the kind of respectful um, approach towards other people, as is done within Rai with infants. And um, so I, I am also wanting to uh, go and do a... Uh, this is goes to the extent that I want to do a, a pr practitioner uh, to become... to do this education, that I can have this kind of play room that you saw at the beginning, which is, uh, relates to also to my ideas of space and uh, movement and uh, kind of how you can have uh, objects to be the one to initiate. And uh, I think they're also very aesthetical, so I really love that about them too. And um, yeah, so, and I think that this, it will take me very far by starting to do this and, uh, and that it will become part of my practice. And yeah, I want to kind of to end it, and I think it's a good moment for the break. Uh, show a little clip in which an infant is uh, uh, showing her how this self-initiated movement takes place. It's a kind of a class, so you can also join in. So uh, that's what I want you to invite you for. So uh, I would say, let's shake <laughs> shoulders and get ready for uh, for the infant-led movement class. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you.